attention cause he is making ways he's getting your attention cause God is making ways God is making ways worship and I need to I need to release this encouragement to somebody and so this prophetic word today is titled when difficulty arises you see when I was in worship um, you guys will see tomorrow the worship was about the worthiness of God like how he's worthy to be praised and so the Holy Spirit brought back into remembrance when I was in Houston and I had been there for three months and um, the Lord was already speaking to me concerning what he promised me back in Milwaukee, which was that when I got to Houston, he would bless me with a home. He would bless me with a car and he would bless me with a job. The job had already materialized quite mirac miraculously. Amen. And um, the apartment and the car were in works. And where the Holy Spirit really was honing in this morning was the difficulty that seemed to come out of nowhere. You see, when we have bad dreams, we think the whole world is over. Instead of seeing that bad dream as information into what the enemy has planned against you. And literally the enemy revealing his hand by the Lord's will so that you can pray against it. You see, within an instant, it's like, whoa, your mind shift changes because you wake up from a bad dream and you're like, oh, I got to pray against all of that and cancel all of that because that's how the enemy's moving. And we rebuke that in Jesus' name. But then also, we take that same approach when difficulty arises. When difficulty arises, God is trying to get your attention. And today, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from direct encounters that I have had with God. When difficulty arises, the Lord wants to get your attention concerning something. There's hallelujah. And even when he was saying to me, there's something that he needs you to partner with him on concerning that difficulty. So what do I mean? So in my own knowledge, I had, um, I stayed in one Airbnb. In Houston, it was easier to pay for Airbnbs by the month because it was much cheaper than LA, okay? And so um, I was already in my second Airbnb. And so I had developed a relationship with the owners where I could sell them the payment for the second month. So we're in the month of March. But they reach out to me and they say, hey, we just want to let you know that someone has the Airbnb booked up for the month of April. So you will have to find somewhere else to go. So in my own comfort, I began to look for more Airbnbs. I believe this is really going to speak to people because it's definitely speaking to me. So in my own comfort, I began to seek Airbnbs. But the peace of the Lord would not rest on any of the Airbnbs. And I'm like, God, what's going on? So the difficulty came, right? Which was that I needed to find a place to stay. That was the first difficulty. I needed to find a place to stay. And so in my own wisdom, in my own knowledge, I'm like, okay, God, just find another Airbnb. But his peace wasn't resting there. And so it was in that moment the Lord told me, it's time for you to find an apartment. So again, a difficulty arose. I needed to find a place to stay. The peace of the Lord wasn't resting on what I normally would do. 
And so since the peace of the Lord wasn't resting, the Lord, he needed to partner with me on something else. God was ready to give me a home, my own home, where I would not have to move place to place. And I was in a place where I was just okay going into the next Airbnb. And so that difficulty arose, one, to get my attention, but then also it arose because the Lord had a greater plan for me. And so that plan was, okay, Lord, I'm going to partner with you. You want me to find a place. So I began to look for places. Nothing was in my budget. Okay, nothing was in my budget. And I knew what I wanted. One thing I've learned about my relationship with God is not to settle. Not to settle. Don't settle. He made that very clear. Don't settle. So... Um, some miraculous things happened. When I say miraculous, it was a place I thought that I wanted. And so I needed to go get fingerprinted for this job I would be working in the summer, building Legos with kids. So tell me why literally the place to go get my um, fingerprint and all that done was down the street from this apartment I thought I found. Nothing but God. The sovereignty of God. Because Uber drivers, they just want to get you to your destination. This Uber driver was like, hey, we got a few minutes before your appointment. Let's just go look at this apartment. He drove in that little area. I said, oh no, take me out. I said, God, this, and I started getting, I started getting sad because I knew what the Lord said, but it wasn't looking like anything that the Lord said. So when I went to work, um, I had a few coworkers and they were like, well, why don't you look like on Facebook groups or something like that? And then the Holy Spirit brought back into my remembrance what he had me do my first week in Houston. It did not make sense, but I did it out of obedience. He had me join a subleasing group in Houston. It was like some random subleasing group he had me join. It was a subleasing group and something else. And so I joined those, but I didn't know why he had me join them. So I joined them and out of obedience and I left it alone. But in that moment, I said, oh, shoot, I remember the Holy Spirit had me. So when I went home, I instantly went to the app. Right at the top, it was this girl seeking for someone to take over her lease. She had a roommate, but she needed someone to take over her lease. And so um, the apartment was beautiful with the pictures. And the price was underneath what I was asking. And it had everything, the, the pool, the gym, everything that I would need, except it had a roommate. And so I was like, okay, God, like, mm, you know. But in my, the, the Holy Spirit was resting on it. So I went to go view the apartment, and of course I was worried because I'm like, well, God, like, because God told me the apartment's yours. Before I even fill out the paperwork, did any of that stuff, he already said it's yours. And so I'm like, okay, God, the other thing that I was more so concerned about then was furniture. The girl gave me all of her new furniture for $160. Everything I needed, it was a desk, it was a dresser, it was a bed, it was all the bathroom stuff. Everything that I needed provided to me well over some thousands for $160. And so I'm telling you this because I still didn't have the apartment yet. She, she's like, oh, I'll just give you this, blah, blah, blah. So this is another lesson. When the Lord begins to have people give you, so, give you stuff related to a blessing, like, hey, I just feel led to buy you this. I just feel led to buy you this car keychain. I just feel led to buy you this. And you know what the Lord told you in your secret place? Know that your blessing is coming. It's already yours. The Lord is, the Lord... Huh, I pray people pick up on this because this has happened to me multiple times. When God is like making it very clear that something is yours, people will begin to bless you in that area. And so that's what happened. Hopefully I'm not losing y'all. I pray that this is encouraging you because it's encouraging me. And so what ended up happening was that was in limbo. I'm waiting to hear back from that. But now another difficulty arose. So now look, the first difficulty arose, which was I needed to find a place by the end of March. Mind you, this is the middle of March. This is like March 13th, March 15th, right? So I needed to find a place by the end of March to go somewhere, right? Boom. So that was the first thing. And because I needed to find this place, I'm looking for an Airbnb, but the peace of the Lord wasn't resting on the Airbnb. And so... That led me to have to look for an apartment. I couldn't find the right apartment. And then the subleasing group, which went back, blah, blah, blah. And the peace of the Lord rested on that. So it was the Lord creating a difficulty, allowing a difficulty, because he wanted me to partner with something bigger. Let's leave it at that. 
Now the next difficulty arose. Now I'm still waiting to hear back from the apartment, everything. God already said it's mine. He done showed me a hand coming down from the sky, all types of stuff. So it was just confirmed. And so fast forward, I'm paying six, $700 a week to get to work through Uber. Cause y'all know I worked in the fifth war. I worked with my babies at the elementary school. And so I remember one day the Lord was like, you're paying too much for Uber. And then somebody said it in real life. You're paying too much for Uber. Like you could be paying a car note. Da, 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 da. So I want to say maybe a night or two after that, the Lord came to me and he said into my ear, he said, 5G LTE, lightning speed, new car by the end of this week. Those were the utterances he spoke. If you don't believe me, go to the Hill and Prophecy Ministry. The video is titled, Stay Anchored in the Promise. The Lord had me, like if y'all watch the videos on that channel, you will see the prophecies around this time of the year, two years ago, was when the Lord was speaking to me concerning these things. Well, almost three years ago now. It'll be three years ago in probably a month or two. But the Lord was speaking those things to me. And I'm sitting there nervous like, God, don't make me no false prophet. <laughs> but it all came to pass. I got my car by the end of that week. But anywho, I'm jumping ahead. So there was a difficulty. The difficulty that arose this second time was that I needed to have a car. Like I needed, I'm paying all of this money. And then the issue was I'm only paying that to get to work. I still have to pay to go take myself to go get groceries. I still do this because the Airbnb I was at couldn't receive Amazon Fresh. So at the time, Amazon Fresh was the big thing. They didn't have, um, it, was a, it was a newly developed area. So they didn't have certain things coming in. So I couldn't get shipped and all the other stuff. I had to get my groceries through Amazon and they wouldn't deliver there. So that's a whole nother thing. So I said, okay, Lord. So... I could go further into that testimony, but just watch the worship video tomorrow morning and I go into detail about the car. The whole point about the car situation was that the Lord wanted to partner with me on something bigger. I wanted again to stay where I was comfortable and the Lord allowed a difficulty to arise because he wanted me to partner with him on something bigger. And so at the end of that, we got ended up getting the car, blah, 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 amazing. But what I wanted to come on and tell someone today is that when difficulty arises, the Lord wants to get your attention, but he's also wanting you to partner with him in a bigger way. And when I tell you my spirit is so encouraged by this, because I'm just like, oh my gosh, Lord, I hear you. I pray that y'all hear him too. Um, like I said, this has happened to me a multitude of times. Even when it came to me getting blessed with my own apartment about six months later, right? Later on that year, um, maybe like eight months later, by the end of that year, y'all know the apartment flooded. Y'all don't believe me. It's on that previous channel too, like the whole thing. And then God having me do seven days of praise and worship. And then like we're circling the walls of Jericho and then boop, he releases my apartment. And not only that, but it's double. Everything in that apartment was double. And so... I just think it's so amazing how God does things. And so difficulty will arise because the Lord wants to get your attention and because he wants you to partner with him in a bigger way. And so I don't know what difficulty has come up in your life and you're trying to go about that difficulty the same way that you have been. But you're beginning to notice that the same way you have been, quite possibly the peace of the Lord isn't on it. But also you're noticing there's restrictions. Like where you could once flow freely, it's like, nope, you can't do it. The Lord is getting your attention. And I know I keep repeating the same points, but that is my teacher brain, okay? Because people hear what they want to hear. But when I teach I want to make sure you walk away with knowledge and understanding concerning my encounters with God so that you are able to apply it to your own life. So again, I will reiterate the point. When difficulty arises in your life, it's two main things. The first thing is that the Lord is trying to get your attention. The second thing is that he wants you to partner with him in a bigger way. And I'll even add a third one in there. He needs you to partner with him in a bigger way because the way that you've been going is not the way he needs you to go. Because the blessing that he has for you 
is right around the corner. If you notice every single time a difficulty arose, the Lord was getting my attention. He wanted me to partner with him coming to agreement with what he wanted to do in a bigger way. And once I came into agreement, that thing, that bigger thing, it came. It was like right there. So it's like the Lord is saying, what you want is right here. What you need is right here. But I need you to take this difficulty. Come with me and come to me in prayer. And let me speak to you about it. And let me tell you that exactly what you pray for is on the other side. I'm trying to tell y'all, I have encountered this time and time again. I don't have a scriptural reference for you. But even when the Lord had Moses tell them that they were Yahweh, that he was Yahweh, he said, what? And he's like, okay, tell them the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. So I come to you speaking about the encounters that you have had with God, him as your provider, him as your banner, him as the one that continues to deliver you. I'm telling you a version of God that you know, but I'm revealing to you a revelation based off an encounter that I've had with God, that God uses difficulty to release the blessing to you. And so I pray that you take this wisdom of this encounter, this continual encounter that I have with God, that I have videos, go back to the Hill and Prophecy Ministry around this time between January and March, and you will see the Lord was prophesying, he was speaking, and what he said, yes, indeed, it came to pass. And so I say this because some people, you just probably came up on this channel, didn't even know there's a whole other channel that goes back like two, three years, that that's also there for you too, amen. And then you can see how far the Lord has brought me. And so I think that's a testimony in itself. But I am beating a dead horse. But again, that's my teacher brain. Because who am I to be teaching people things and you don't walk away with knowledge? Knowledge is the ability to apply it, is the ability to give it to somebody else. At least that's what I learned in epistemology, the, the, psych, the uh, philosophy course that I took when I was in college. You know, it teaches you what true knowledge is. Amen. And so my point here, again, is that when difficulty arises, three things are happening. The Lord wants to get your attention. He wants to partner with you in a bigger way. But third thing, not only does he want to partner with you in a bigger way, but what you've been praying for is around the corner and the Lord needs this situation to shift you so that you are perfectly postured to receive. So I pray that this blesses people. I pray testimonies come from it. I love you all so much. And I pray that the Lord keeps you, that he shines his face upon you, that he strengthens you, and that you lack nothing. In the name of Jesus, have a great day. I love you all. Talk to you later.